Hey guys, Enter the Stars. Welcome to the channel. I pre-recorded this show because I wanted to hang out with you guys in the chat Monday morning and get through some of these headlines and so we could all laugh together and you guys can ask me any questions that you might have as we're in the headlines. Now, we've covered the Clintons ad nauseum and one of you sent me this particular photo that Chelsea uploaded for her mother's 74th birthday. Now, for those of you that don't know, Hillary Clinton's birthday falls just a few days before Halloween, and there's all kinds of bizarre synchronicities with her birthday, but we're not going to get into that in this show. But I thought it was interesting that this photo that Chelsea re-uploaded was of clowns, them dressed as clowns during Halloween. We've talked all about this whole clown meme, and it just so happens that this is what they want to resurrect. Now let's read this because there may be other clues in this article. Chelsea Clinton sent a sweet message to her mom, Hillary Clinton, on the former First Lady's 74th birthday, Tuesday, adding a throwback picture of the pair clowning around. Thank you, Mom, for being a clown with me for Halloween, supporting all other costume choices throughout the years, and always cheering me on, Chelsea41 wrote on Twitter. Most of all, thank you for being such a wonderful grandma. Happy birthday at Hillary Clinton. While her daughter was looking back at their colorful Halloween costumes, Hillary was across the pond at University of Oxford also thinking about the past. So there you go. The clown meme resurrected here for Hillary's birthday. Now this next story is bizarre. Another one of you sent me this story because here they're admitting that this film that had come out in 2016 was actually had actually almost very specifically foreshadowed the coming spam demic now let's look into this because this is very bizarre let's listen to this and read about this time it was regarded as a quirky romantic comedy the story of a man who must isolate in his apartment to prevent the spread of a deadly wait for it coronavirus so they are actually specific and name it as a cv19 this is unbelievable <laughs> steve peacock and charles cotier join us now morning to you both welcome home thank you, um, thank you for having look at the body look at the duping delight with this guy Steve, uh, we're from now. Morning to you both. Welcome home. Thank you, um, thank you. Steve Peacock and Charles Cotier. Join us now. Morning to you both. Welcome home. Thank you, um, thank you for having us. Steve. Now, this is an interview from 2016, long before CV19, in which they were looking at and talking about this film that would later basically nail it. Watch. Uh, we're following your every move in Hollywood. We're so proud of you. It's so important for you to, to come home. And, and it was the opportunity to work with uh, with Charles, who I got to know obviously on, on Home and Away, director in Home and Away history, and he had one of the hardest blocks to direct. There. Charles, I'm a very small part, but Charles, what he does in this film is quite extraordinary. Uh, Charles, bit Now I'm going to fast forward through this a bit because we don't want to get content ID on this, but basically it's a guy who gets locked down for 21 days in a quarantine because of a c-o-r-o-n-a v-i-r-u-s this was 2016. we all met on home and away and we just hit it off and uh through the doors and went but make this movie it's so, perfect yeah, um, yeah hopefully some people over there will, will like it and well you know people now i mean you've got people hopefully some people will like it uh, i don't think they're liking it too much in australia right now now watch this then they fast forward to now your okay, coattails <laughs> thanks guys fast forward to today and that far-fetched idea has turned out to be well quite prophetic even down to the name of the virus and its transmission from bats needless to say that so now they're trying to trivialize and wash away all of their predictive programming as some kind of strange coincidence do you see what's happening here all the work that we do on this channel, exposing all this stuff, all this programming, they're now trying to say is either strange coincidence or some type of strange phenomenon that has nothing to do with them already knowing the agenda. That movie is getting a whole level coronavirus with a known fatality rate of over 90%. Elevated heart rate and high temperature will be the first symptoms. 
if you don't have anything like... Kane Guglielmi came up with this genius comedy back in 2016. Little did he realise he was predicting the future after coming into contact with a deadly virus. The quirky film explores the challenges and claustrophobia of living in a confined space, a situation now familiar right around the world. Tuscany, living in the for the pandemic. So then they go on to talk about the director or the producer, and he, right now he's in Italy on lockdown, or he was, when this film, which was in April 2020, so this was right on the money. Now here's the producer guy. Let's see here. Let's play this. Pandemic. And Kane joins us now live from Tuscany. It's lovely to see your face. Now, of course, his name is Kane. So there's another clue. Uh, did you ever have an inkling that this concept would become true, frighteningly true? Look at the duping delight here. No, definitely not. <laughs> I mean, just... a, a, a huge coincidence and um, irrespective of the fact that it's uh, taken out a, a lot of people and affected a lot of families around the world. The duping delay, I mean, according to them, right? According to their numbers, all these people have, have died, right? And so he's first he laughs about it, then he catches himself because he realizes, wow, it's kind of inappropriate for me to be laughing about that. Well, it's, I find it very bizarre and uh, very coincidental that- But he's still laughing, he like can't help himself lines up with what's going on in the world today coincidental is one way of putting it. it must have just well i can't take credit for it entirely uh, a, a young fellow that i work with uh, john ratchford and i um the quivering voice looking away look at this a, a young fellow that i work with uh, john ratchford and i um got so there's something going on here okay this is bizarre i don't understand there's a whole class of elite people that are into things and for agendas that you and I couldn't possibly imagine. Now I'll put the whole clip and the link to that in the pinned comment so you guys can go through that with a fine tooth comb if you want. But this is unbelievable. The Aussie film that predicted the CV-19 spamdemic quarantine and now these people have lost their rights and everything else and this is definitely nothing to laugh about, okay? The forced quarantine. Now, I probably won't take a look at this film because it's just so in your face. And it seems like the more we do these film decodes, the more they are understanding that they're having to come out with this stuff and having to disclose it. Otherwise, they're caught red-handed, aren't they? So, that's what's going on in Australia. What's this next story? This is Washington Post. Air Force, the first to face troops' rejection of the Pokemon sticker mandate as thousands avoid shots. So pilots in the Air Force are not going for this. Let's see what's going on here. Up to 12,000 Air Force personnel have rejected orders to get fully Pokemon stickered against the CV-19 despite the mandate. And the officials say it's too late for them to do so by Tuesday's deadline, posing a first major test for military leaders whose August directive has been met with defiance among a segment of the force. The vast majority of the active duty airmen, 96%, are at least partially Pokemon stickered, according to the Air Force. But officials have warned that barring an, uh, an approved medical or religious exemption, those who defy law force to be immunized are subject to punishment. So there you go. Now, why is it the pilots are the ones not going for this on for this? Well, I have my guesses as to why. Can't say why. But it's interesting that the pilots are not going for this. And there's got to be a very good reason. Has anyone interviewed any of these pilots to ask them why? There's a, there's that they don't want to do this. I don't believe that they have. Now, let's go on to this next story. This is NBC News. The blah, blah, Blasio is under fire for his mandates in New York. And the firemen and a lot of the other city workers are not having it. In fact, they can't get their trash picked up because people are angry about these mandates. And they're like, okay, you don't want us to come to work. We'll let the trash pile up. And I think this is appropriate and fitting for the trash that's piling up in New York. 
Missed collections were reported in Staten Island and Brooklyn, and residents have taken to social media outrage over the accumulating garbage and to raise concern that the slowdown is, in, is intentional in protest of the mandate. Well, yeah. Well, I thought these people were heroes, right? And this is what they're saying. They're saying, you know what? We're not disposable heroes. You can't make us heroes one day and then the next day take away our freedoms and rights. And I think they're absolutely correct. Mayor de blah blah Blasio announced last week that city workers were required to have received at least one dose of the Vidco 19 Pokemon sticker by Friday or to be placed on unpaid leave, said that supervisors at the Department of Sanitation would not allow missed collections to continue. What are they going to do? Throw them in jail? What are they going to do? Bring in the National Guard to pick up the garbage? I mean, when are these elite people going to understand that it's we the people who are the ones that make the world go round, right? And if you start treating us poorly or forcing us to do things we don't want to do, then, you know, it gets to the point where, you you know, we have the power. And until, see, that's the thing. Like, we have to realize we have the power. And stop, you know, walking around gingerly as if we are under the power of these people. Because we're not. And I'm proud of these firefighters and, and police officers who are standing up. Let the garbage pile up. Maybe it will send a message. Now, the smart thing about some of these protests that went on were that many of these firefighters and police officers went directly to de Blasio's home and they protested outside his home. They brought the protest to his home. And this is what I've been telling the people of France. You're not doing any good walking around the streets of Paris. You need to go to the places where these people live and protest. Not to do anything mean or violent, but just make them look out their window and see your frustration instead of only seeing it on the news or through a screen. And then when they feel uncomfortable and it's hard for them to pull their car out of their driveway and they're constantly being reminded that they're not doing the will of the people, that's when things can begin to change. That's the power that the people actually have. We just have to come together. And that's why the elite love to divide us because by dividing us into all of these little groups, we can't come together. Do you see how this works now? This is why you shouldn't get upset when you see right-left paradigm stories, when you see stories that you think are being unfair to the T-man, or you see stories that you think are being unfair to Bo Jivan. They're all the same. They make those stories on purpose to make you angry so that you can't come together across party lines for a cause that both of you are being affected by. So here are some of the firefighters and police officers. And de Blasio is taking a tough stand on this. He's pretending like he's not going to back down. Well, it's going to get to the point where as the city workers decide not to play ball, de Blasio is going to have to give in. I don't know in what shape or form. And I hope that they don't opt to try to bring in the National Guard. But if you work for the National Guard, or you're, you need to also check yourself and realize that you being the be all end all, you know, threat, that's still hurting the people. And you're sworn to the people, not these governments. So that's what's going on in New York as the trash piles up. Now it looks like the governor of Florida is suing Bo Jivin over the mandate. So this is a new development, October 28th. And basically, he's alleging that the president has overstepped his legal authority, which he has. Not even a governor has the right to do what they're trying to do in some of these states in terms of mandating some of this stuff. Nobody has the right over your body. That's your choice. But at least this governor, for the time being, is starting to stand up or standing up in the face of being forced to do all this stuff. And we're not going to get weighed down in all the legalese, but this is what's going on on the latest in Florida. USA Today. Great resignation sets off a vicious cycle. As more people quit, exhausted colleagues also head for the exit. So this is called the snowball effect. So what happens is when people quit and the other people have to fill in, work longer hours, get treated even worse... And then the businesses making less profit, uh, crunch down even more on the workers. It causes a cascade effect. 
And it's interesting that it's not the CV-19 that caused this, but the mandates that are causing this. In other words, it's not that people are falling ill and they can't find workers. It's the policies to try to force people to get Pokemon stickers. Now understand that the mainstream media is admitting that CV-19 is starting to come to a close. They're finally done with their little operation and they're starting to admit that this whole thing's coming to a close, but yet that's not lining up with how hard they continue to push people to get the Pokemon sticker. Don't you think they, they would let up a little bit? But they're not, or at least they're pretending like they're not. We'll see what happens as these deadlines approach and they lose people all over the place. But uh, interesting Let's read a little bit of this article. All of the job quitting roiling the U.S. labor market is leading many workers to quit their jobs. The departure of so many colleagues is leaving employees who have stayed with their companies struggling to handle more work and wondering if they're earning enough to make it worthwhile. As a result, many of those were loyal or those more loyal staffers are bolting too. It's becoming a vicious cycle. So... People quitting in droves. Here's more on the New York City firefighters protesting the mandates outside the mayor's residence. As we mentioned earlier, this is the place you want to do it. You want to make sure these people are seen and heard. Here are some of the pictures. Essential workers aren't disposable heroes. You would think that these people would have some clout. Politically, because especially in a place like New York, who's been through a lot in terms of disasters and things, right? But de Blasio doesn't seem to care. He's just going to do whatever he wants to do and disrespect these people. So, like I said, we'll see how all that finishes out there. Next story. FDA authorize, authorizes... CV-19 for kids. So it's here. And this images like this just break my heart. Look at this little girl and what is happening to her. And what will happen to tens of thousands, if not millions of children in America. This is what it's come to since the beginning. We've been saying that eventually they will come for the children. At first, they didn't make it sound like they were going to. And now... This, make no mistake, will be mandatory for many millions of school children. It's already mandatory for tens of thousands of school children in Los Angeles County. And that soon they will roll this out to the rest of the nation. So parents will have to have to make a choice, right? What will you do? Will you homeschool? Well, if you homeschool, they're still going to come for your children. It's just a matter of time. It might not be this year or next year but it will be within the next several years. Judge bars Bo Jive administration from firing unstickered employees with pending religious exemption. So more of the cornucopia of responses by the judges, some siding with freedom, others siding against it. National Review, in this case, they seem to side with the people. Next story. What's the story about here? Sticker confers better protection than natural moon the city. Okay. So according to their studies, they're saying that the Pokemon sticker gives better protection than your own natural moon city system. Unbelievable. But if you say so, L.A. Sheriff promises the sticker mandate will cause max, mass exodus of cops. So this is happening all over. This was dated October 30th. So cops in L.A. County. Now here's what I don't understand. Why didn't these people, why didn't these cops stand up for all the other people and the mandates that happened to them? Why are they waiting until they're being mandated? This is the problem with waiting until something comes to you before you make a stand. Because it's going to come for you. 
you're better off making a stand for all the other people who are having to make sacrifices. And this is why I remind you guys over and over again that even though you might not personally be feeling the effects of everything we're going through right now, there are many, many people, for instance, that are having to choose whether or not they're going to get a Pokemon sticker or lose their job. Millions of people are having to make this very difficult decision. So we should be talking about that and trying to raise awareness and help people because it's coming for everybody. It's not going to matter about your job anymore. Pretty soon this is going to be required just to go anywhere, to do anything. And it's a slow dragnet of the erosion of freedoms. That's the way they like it because they can gradually tighten the screws and you'll never know it's coming until you're underneath it and there's no way to get out of it. But at least these sheriffs are trying to stand up at this point and we'll follow that story as well to see how that all shakes out. Now, I didn't know this, but apparently in this next story, Ice Cube uh, is somewhat of a truther. He reportedly walked away from $9 million movie project because of the mandate. The project was called Oh Hell No and... He says they'll have to, the film will have to go on without him after he turned down a role because of the sticker mandate. Wow. So you get some of these, uh, you know, black athletes, black actors, some of these people standing up. Now understand that the way Hollywood works is you go from hero to zero, just like cops and firefighters. So understand that these people are giving up a lot. To stand up. Now, definitely some of this is gaslighting. Absolutely. I haven't followed Ice Cube in years, so I don't know what he's up to lately. But understand that some of these people are actually real people standing against this. Now, do I think that there's a whole market out there of people pretending to get the Pokemon sticker, but really not getting it? Yes, I think that's happening. Just to make it look like they're complying. To, to basically brainwash all the people that won't comply into complying. I think that's probably happening. But people who aren't in that club, they are saying, no, I don't want this. So that's what's going on with Ice Cube. Interesting. Now, this is Connecticut. This is where I'm at right now. And they're trying to say, now understand that Last year, when I said this, when I said that by now, a lot, most people have probably already been exposed to it. I got a strike in the video taken now. But now, all of a sudden, the article is admitting that 50% of the people that live in Connecticut probably already had CV-19. says right here, I said this several months ago, and I caught a strike for that. Do you see how they're starting to have to concede this? Because their own science says that this thing is so contagious that unless you're living in a cave somewhere in Tora Bora, that you probably have already been exposed to it. And now they're actually talking about natural immunity. So now we can probably say it before you couldn't say it because that got you a strike too. But now they're actually conceding that natural immunity is a thing and it could help, but they're still saying that the Pokemon sticker is the best way to have immunity. Is That's what their science is saying. Now, this article, for reference sake, is, what is this? Is this New York Times? This might be New York Times. I can't see it. But this is what they're saying. Let's read this article. It says, while the Pokemon sticker nation remains the most important tool... And ending Connecticut's CV-19 outbreak once and for all, experts say another factor could play a, a role as well. Immunity from prior CV-19 infection, known as natural immunity. Uh, YouTube, if you're watching this, shame on you. I was saying the exact same thing that you gave me a strike for. But because I'm not a scientist, you're not allowed to say that. You see how that works? Natural immunity is not absolute. It is not indefinite. As with immunity from the sticker nation, it fades over time. Okay, how much time? What are the studies on how much time it takes for immunity to fade? Do they have studies or are they just saying that? 
It says research suggests uh, that those who have had CV-19 are unlikely to catch it again immediately and therefore unlikely to contribute to a broader outbreak in the near future. I was saying the exact same thing. Though estimates vary on what share of the Connecticut residents have been infected with CV-19 since the start of the pandemic, one model suggests the number could be approaching 50%. That's a lot of people that they're saying already caught it who have some kind of natural immunity. So they're now admitting that this plays a role in not allowing the spam to continue on. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused as to why they're conceding this right now. Why are they admitting to this? Well, it's because they want this whole thing to start to come to a close. And now they have to give everybody a logical exit strategy that makes sense to everybody. You see how that works? They use the information when they want to, but when it's inconvenient, when they're trying to get everyone to get a Pokemon sticker, they don't want anyone talking about natural immunity. But now, okay, all of a sudden it's okay to talk about it. And this stuff just infuriates me. Because had they admitted to this early on, maybe some people wouldn't have been so fearful, wouldn't have run out to get a Pokemon sticker. So that's what's going on with that. Now, Here's one of those stories, this is Business Insider, basically pretending like they're sabotaging uh, Thump's new uh, Truth social media site before it got off the ground. They're saying it's failing. Now understand, this is just to enrage the right. This is part of the right-left paradigm to get people angry and to vote for him, right? Because they're going to say, no way, we're going to let the Democrats embarrass him and think that his social media platform is going to fail. We're going to go vote for him and show the Democrats. And once you vote for him, you're voting for consent. And then he can do whatever he wants, just like he did during his presidency. Things like make a Pokemon sticker at warp speed, you see. So they're pretending to roast the new site. Now, I don't know what the future is for his new site, if it's going to be successful or not. But it could be built to fail. That could be the end result. That could be the PSYOP. Or it could be super um, divisive and allow all kinds of crazy things. And then firm up the divide between the two parties. Who knows what these controllers will do? Who knows what their plan will be? And I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what the future holds for this. But it's very possible it could be successful. Or it could be a big straw man. Or it could be a honey trap. Who knows? Who knows? Now, this last story from The Guardian is a prime example of how the elite have no idea what it's like for all to be on the bottom with all of us. Remember the press sec secretary was trying to say that this inflation wasn't affecting people like us? Remember that? Trying to say that the, it only affected rich people? And that it was negligible for people like us. Do you understand that most Americans spend a third of their income on food and shopping? Most families spend about $1,000 a month on grocery shopping and only make about $3,000 a month. So what's really happening here? Well, they're trying to brainwash you in, into thinking that it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's just plain as day. In California, this new law that they passed that you can't, uh, you know, turn on guard equipment with a gas engine, which also probably spills over into generators. So if you have a generator and you're up in the foothills of California, you might not be able to be allowed to turn that on in the near future. So they're saying here that this affects landscapers, people that don't make a lot of money who work for every penny they get right so that's what's going on in california so those are pretty much the headlines today that i wanted to go over with you guys we'll be back on here tomorrow i rescheduled tomorrow's show which is going to be the series sanctuary we're going to go over some clips of that and look at the foreshadowing of an outbreak that happened in that TV series. Now the TV series came out in 2008, but there's some very specific foreshadowing that we'll go over tomorrow. Love each and every one of you. Have a great day. Take care and be safe, you guys.